Nature of Religious Language. Last uh, lecture, I promised that we would be talking next about, uh, about language. And we'll, we'll talk about uh, language and, uh, and symbols and signs today. Uh, many signs and, and symbols are linguistic, uh, many are not, but even uh, some of those signs and symbols that are not directly out of language are somewhat dependent on language. Tillich begins this chapter by saying uh, today that there really isn't a central clearinghouse or a central authority that, that kind of tells us how do you, you do religious language? How do you do religious symbolism? Uh, So-called Protestant uh, scholastic, scholasticism and also the, the Catholic scholastics even further back perform that function for religion and culture for uh, long periods of time. But in our modern or postmodern world, Tillich says there's a lot of confusion about language and about symbolism more generally. So we'll, uh, maybe we'll try to clear up uh, at least a little confusion today, at least as far as Tillich is concerned. Once again, we see that Tillich is uh, giving us a polarity. And he's talking about uh, symbol versus sign. Now, what is it that signs and symbols have in common? Hopefully, you're saying to yourself, well, they both point to something beyond themselves. They both have a referent or an object to which they refer or point. So I say, table. And uh, I can point also physically to to the, the table that's right in front of me, but when I say table, you, uh, you would imagine at least, or see if, if not see something like that, or see that depending on where the camera is right now. So both symbols and signs have an object, a referent beyond themselves that's different from the word or the symbol, but they're pointing to that reality beyond themselves. So that's the similarity. But there are very important differences between symbols and signs. Well, let's, let's get to the, the positive first. And uh, I mean, signs have their, their functions, but when it comes to religion and we might say the depth dimensions of culture, we're talking more about symbols than of signs. And Tillich says the primary thing that distinguishes a symbol from a mere sign is that the symbol participates in the meaning, the power of that which it points to. It, in some ways, uh, we, it is identified with and participates in the, the power of that, that object it's symbolizing. Well, let, let's, let's give an example. The American flag is still a powerful symbol to myself and probably most Americans today. We do sing the, the uh, uh, national anthem. We might uh, do a pledge of allegiance to the flag. Uh, we, we would put our heart, uh, uh, our hand rather, across our heart uh, when we do such uh, ritual acts, kind of cultural, political, and religious acts at the same time in a way. Um, but um, we, okay, I'm, can we stop it there? I got, I got lost there a second. 